morning and welcome to our service on this Mothering Sunday. We have in front of us a vibrant, colorful display of plants. And before we begin the service proper, let us have a blessing on these, this vista. So may these flowers be a sign of hope and joy on this Mothering Sunday and going onwards. A reminder of us to be thankful for all the bounteous gifts in God's creation. Amen. And so before we begin our service, let us take a moment to still ourselves, to center ourselves, and to welcome God into this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions, in penitence and faith. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen.
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today, Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen in us, our daily, in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow, we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so I pray that I may speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We find ourselves now at the halfway point in Lent. Lent, that pilgrimage that leads us inexorably towards the cross and on to Christ's mighty resurrection. Today as, is seen as being a day of celebration a special day where we get to share in the joy of family, of those people who are our nearest and dearest. But before I go all soppy on you, I do feel that it is important that today, Mothering Sunday, will inevitably be for some people a day that is not filled with happiness. For some, this will be a day that is difficult and painful, that truth needs to be acknowledged and understood that today of all days can bring with it a mixture of feelings and emotions within which lie love and longing and grief and heart. They all have a part to play in this day. And of course, I can only acknowledge that this is the case. The responses that people will have to today will be as varied as the people who mark the day. But what we all have in common is the fact that we are created through an abundance of love. A love from a God who is love. A God who walks alongside us in love through our human experience through the peaks and the troughs. A God who shares in all of our feelings, whether they are of heart or of joy. There is a place for all of us at his table. And if Mothering Sunday is not a happy experience for you, you're welcome to offer your sadness to God as much as your happiness. Because we are first and foremost children of God. There is no getting away from the fact that today's reading is difficult 
it paints a picture that is just bleak. It shows that love and being open to love makes us vulnerable to grief and loss, something that seems to be especially resonant now that we are in the season of repentance. Although, if I am being honest, it does seem as if this last year, and it is almost exactly a year, that we're in some kind of Narnia, where instead of a perpetual winter, we find ourselves in an endless Lenten lockdown. But back to the reading. Imagine, if you can, that scene with that ragtag bunch of people gathered around the cross, being laughed at, being jeered at, in a scene of such humiliation and defeat. Jesus breathing his last. It is a scene that is not dignified. He didn't just slip peacefully away. It was excruciating. The word excruciating means out of crucifying. The longer he would spend up on the cross, the harder he would have found it to breathe until eventually, inevitably, he would have just choked. It is a scene which is unutterably awful and it brings me close to tears every time I think about it. Everyone involved in that scene would have been wretched. There seems to be nothing that is hopeful about that passage. And yet, and yet, when Jesus looks down on those people, he looks at them in the midst of indescribable pain and suffering that he may have been feeling. He looks down on them and he is filled with love, and he is filled with compassion. He's not concerned for himself, but ensuring that they are going to be all right going on into the future. He gives a spark of hope where, frankly, there seems to be none. Woman, here is your son. And speaking to the disciple that he loved, here is your mother. The power of those words are absolutely extraordinary. The bonds of kinship are not always those of blood or of upbringing. They can be bonds of relationship, of shared vision, of care, of attentiveness, of love. The old rigid labels that we have traditionally kept and let's be honest, the church has had its share of keeping people pigeonholed and labeled in the past, keeping them in their places. But those old labels, they slip away and they reveal a new reality where what matters more is what is written in your heart. We have to ask ourselves, do I mirror the care that Jesus had for those people around him? Do I mirror the love that Mary's, the Mary's, and the disciple whom Jesus loved had for him? Does the relationship that we have with those around us reflect this new reality where the bonds of kinship are linked to the God who always cares and always listens? And if they don't, what can we do to make ourselves the worthy successors of this glorious love? How can we show the bonds of kinship to those people around us, whether family, friend, or stranger? Amen. So let us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in Lent we remember the love which drove Jesus to his ministry, enduring temptations and going without hesitation to Jerusalem and death upon the cross. Remind us of your great love and grace, which calls us to a life of goodness and service in the family of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let our church be one which reflects your goodness and love. Bless our leaders and all of those who serve your mission in this community and further afield. Teach us to live together in ways which help us learn your love, your forgiveness, and your purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you guide world leaders to advance peace and justice, that help those who face temptation to corruption or pride and strengthen those who choose to defend the poor, the weak and the oppressed. We ask that those leaders that we have, whether in this country or throughout the world, know of humility and compassion. Show us what we can do to protect the vulnerable and to encourage practical help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we give thanks for mothers, for families, for those people that we love, we pray for all who find difficulty in family life. Help us to keep in mind divided families and those who are unable to have families. May we be generous in including all of the love that you share in abundance with us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on those who are in difficulty, in distress, or weakness for, of any reason. We pray for those we know to be ill, to be hurting. And in a moment's silence, we give the names of people written on our hearts up to you. From our prayer list, we pray for Roy, Pippa, Shirley, Liam, Jane, Sylvia, Susie, Christopher, Joshua, Heather, Noel, Penny, all those people at Swan House, Harry, and Barbara. And from our Book of Remembrance, we remember Roger Holland and Patricia Langley. We commit them to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we reflect on the many ways your love has reached us, 
Help us to love with greater integrity. Show us that those most in need guide us to find practical expressions of the love that you show. And when there seems to be little response, give us the character of Jesus who loved until the end. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us, if you're able, show one another a sign of that peace. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, and he put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and one for you, a holy people. And now we give you thanks, because you give us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace, as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mysteries with mind and heart renewed. And therefore, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. 
And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer this to you, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share in this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. James, St. Lawrence, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all of your saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, broken for us. The blood of Christ shed for us. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, to take up your cross, and to follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.